Good morning. Now, I think we're ready to begin, Mr McGregor. Uh, yes, my lord. The first witness is Ms Sorrell Cousins. Thank you. Good morning, Ms. Cousins. Morning. Um, as you're aware, you're shortly going to be asked some questions by Mr. McGregor, who's on my right. Um, but before then, can I ask you if you would affirm? Yes. Just sitting where you are, um, if you would repeat these words after me. I solemnly, sincerely, and truly. I solemnly, sincerely, and truly. Declare and affirm. Declare and affirm. And I will tell the truth. That I will tell the truth. The whole truth. The whole truth. And nothing but the truth. And nothing but the truth. Thank you very much indeed. Now, there is, as you can see, a directional microphone, which should help a, amplify your voice. But perhaps speak a little slowly and, you know, and more um, a, louder than you would normal, in, in normal conversation. Now, um, I don't know how long your evidence will take. It, we may not get to the stage of our usual um, a coffee break at half past 11. We will take a coffee break at half past 11, should you still be giving evidence at that stage. But if for any reason at all you want to take a break during your evidence, just indicate that to me and we'll take a break. Mr McGregor. Thank you. Ms Cousins, can you tell the inquiry your full name, please? Sorrel Emma Cousins. Thank you. And you've provided a witness statement to the inquiry dated the 19th of April 2022, is that correct? That's right. And that's available at pages 158 to 167 of the bundle. The contents of the statement will form part of your evidence to the inquiry, but you'll also be asked some questions today. If at any point you want to refer to your statement, please do let me know. If I could begin by asking you some questions about your qualifications and experience, are you a senior programme manager within NHS Lothian? That's right. Thank you. And in terms of your NHS career, you, you joined as a graduate in 2001? Yes. And then you moved to the Scottish Government Health Directorate and then back to NHS Lothian in, in 2008, is that uh, correct? That's right. And from 2008 onwards, you were working on the reprovision of the Department of Clinical Neurosciences. And then thereafter, did you become involved in the reprovision of the Royal Hospital for Children and Young People? Yes, in 2008, the project for the Department of Clinical Neurosciences was in parallel and run by the same team as for, for Children's Hospital. Okay. Uh, so whenever you joined NHS Lothian, they were standalone projects, one for the Children's Hospital and one for the Department of Clinical Neurosciences? And you were principally working at that time on the project for the Department of Clinical Neurosciences? Yes. And am I right in thinking that in from December 2010 onwards you became project manager for the reprovision of, of both the Royal Hospital for Children and Young People and the Department of Clinical Neurosciences? That's correct. Can you just explain what, what did that role involve? 2010? Yes. Um, we had completed an outline business case for the reprovision of the Department of Clinical Neurosciences, which um, concluded the preferred option for NHS Lothian was to move DCN into the same project as the Children's Hospital into the same new building um, and deliver them together. So in 2010, we were invited to write an outline business case for a joint project and this was following the change in funding availability for the children's hospital that had previously been approved through OBC in 2008. Um, so the sequence was in 2009 NHS Lothian approved the way forward for DCN would be the preferred way forward would be to um, join the two projects up together. 
um, that didn't go forward to Scottish Government at their request. And in 2010, we, with the change in funding availability, we were invited to write a joint OBC. So if we just take that in stages, 2008 to 2010, there's effectively two separate projects. There's the Children's Hospital and then there's the Department for Clinical Neurosciences. That's correct. And both of those are proceeding on the basis of how would the funding for those hospitals be at that stage? What was anticipated by nature? Capital funding was okay. anticipated. And you mentioned then in, in 2010, there's, there's a change. So what happens in relation to the funding in 2010? I think it was in late 2009, um, it was announced that um, capital funding would no longer be available for the Children's Hospital reprovision. Um, and we, oh, sorry, was that 2000? The cap, uh, whenever it was announced that capital funding was no longer available for the Children's Hospital reprovision, the Scottish Government at the same time announced the introduction of the non profit distributing model and that the Children's Hospital and DCN would be delivered through that route. Okay. So, again, if we just take things in stages. Whenever we're looking at the, the separate department for clinical neurosciences, was there ever a business case that was approved by NH Lothian for that standalone project? There was, but the approved business case was for the preferred option for it to not be standalone anymore. Okay. Does that make sense? It, 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 it does. And, yeah. But did that ever go forward to the Scottish Government for approval? Why not? My recollection, it was approved by NHS Lothian Board and the lack of available capital meant that Scottish Government Capital Investment Group um, <coughs> requested, or that Scottish Government requested it wasn't submitted to the Capital Investment Group. Okay, so two separate projects. You've got the standalone business case for the Children's Hospital. You've got the standalone business case for the Department of Clinical Neuroscience. But the Department of Clinical Neuroscience, when it was capital funded, never goes to Scottish Government because NHS Lothian has been told that there's no capital funding. That's my understanding. Okay. Yes. And again, just to make sure I'm understanding you, you then said that there's an announcement made by Scottish Government that there's not going to be capital funding for either of the projects but that there would be a combined project. And can you just clarify what was the funding model going to be for that combined project? That was revenue funded, uh, non-profit distributing model. Thank you. Again, just when we're talking about matters of a, of a generality, you say in your statement very fairly that the detail of why new hospitals were required is, is set out within the outline business case. But just at a high level, can you summarise your understanding as to why new hospitals were required for Edinburgh? Yeah, um, for both the Department of Clinical Neurosciences and the Royal Hospital for Sick Children, uh, they were in dated accommodation that did not meet current standards. Um, I think everything had been done in the time they'd been occupied to upgrade that accommodation. Um, also expand it um, for increasing patient numbers, for new therapies, new treatments, new technologies that were coming through. Um, and the buildings were no longer fit for purpose and could be adapted any further. At the same time, we needed to um, combine um, emergency pathways um, for adult um, neurosurgery um, and paediatric emergencies as well. And we were looking to create, uh, NHS with Lothian was looking to create a major acute site um, at Little France at the Royal Infirmary, bringing together the front door emergency services for paediatrics and adults and including the pathway for, um, neurological, neurosurgical. Okay. emergencies. So again, just so that I understand this, effectively outdated buildings in terms of the existing facilities yeah. and a desire to create a major trauma centre, I think it's referred to in the outline business case, whereby you have all, all acute services on, on one site. That's correct. So in terms of the choice 
of the site at Little France, as opposed to other options that we might see in, in the papers, such as St John's in Livingston. Uh, again, was that your understanding as to why this project was taking place at Little France? Yes. Just, I, I think, to assist with some of the, the chronology, if, if I can ask you to have a, a paper in, in front of you, which is Bundle 3, Volume 1, at page 572. So this is a paper headed up, RHSC Reprovision Project, Project Overview, as at 9th October. Do you see that? And we'll, we'll come on to it, but at page 574, just uh, for the benefit of the core participants in his lordship, this is a, a paper that was authored by Rose Byrne and Sorrel Cousins dated the October 2009. So when we're looking at this paper, this is a, a paper dated October 2009, which I think might assist in, in terms of the chronology, in terms of when the announcement was made by, by Scottish Government. So if we can have, just have a look at this, at, at this stage we're looking at a, a who's who. We see the, the project sponsor, project director, clinical director all being set out at the top. And then we see at the bottom supply chain. Could you just explain to us what your understanding of the, the supply chain was at, at the bottom, those four or five bullet points? Yes, um, so the principal supply chain partner were appointed through Framework Scotland um, and this um, this was BAM um, with the partners listed here to develop the design and the planning for the standalone children's hospital. So by this stage in 2009 the project has got to a point whereby architects, health planners, experts in mechanical and electrical engineering, structural engineering, etc., have, have all been identified and engaged by NHS Lothian. And then if we look on to, to page 573, please. Under timetable. See there that the full business case will be submitted to the Scottish Government Health Department in July 2010. RHSC and DCN services are due to command, commence at Little France in, in spring 2013. Do you see that? Yes. So is that your expectation as to when the new hospital would, would be operational as, as at 2009? At that stage, yes. Yeah. <laughs> And then just for completeness, if we look on to, to page 574, you'll see that this is a paper authored by yourself and, and Rose Byrne. Do you see that? Who, who was Rose Byrne? Rose was the project manager who was working on the children's hospital when we had two separate parallel projects. So okay. Rose was my, my counterpart in the children's hospital. So effectively, a joint paper authored by individuals involved on the one hand in the children's hospital and on the other, the, the department for... Clinical neuroscience. That's right. Thank you. You, you tell us in your statement that, that you go on and there's a, an outline business case that, that's created for both parts, Children's Hospital and Department of Clinical Neurosciences, it dated the, the 25th of January 2012. At, at paragraph six, you say, I would describe myself as the main editor of the business cases. Could you just explain what you mean by that, that term, that you were the, the editor of the business cases? The business case follows uh, a template or a structure that's set out in the Scottish Capital Investment Manual, um, which pulls together a number of work streams and components that um, an NHS board, an NHS body needs to go through to demonstrate the need for uh, a capital development. Um, and depending on what those elements are, it might be about bed modelling and projection of activity, for example, and future demand for a service. Um, it might be uh, a risk assessment process. 
Um, these all involve different stakeholders and different parties in the project. Um, and the business case is um, the vehicle in which we pull together all of the different strands of work. So in terms of editing or writing that business case and editing um, the various component parts to put them into a single narrative and into a, into a, and to, to tell that story to make the case um, to justify public investment um, essentially that that's what that role is and again with the, within your statement at, at paragraph six you, you describe the whole process of creating the, the business case as a, as a collaborative effort Very is that what you mean in terms of there are a whole range of stakeholders that would feed material into a business case whole range of stakeholders who would feed material into and who would also review and comment on the drafting of the business case. Uh, and you've explained that the business case would be prepared in compliance with the requirements of, of the Scottish Capital Investment Manual, is that right? That's correct. Can you explain to the inquiry, we'll come on to look at it, but again, just at a high level, what is the, the Scottish Capital Investment Manual? What, what's its purpose? The purpose of SKIM is to give NHS boards um, that blueprint, that template for um, presenting and developing a business case. It starts with the initial agreement um, stage, looking at the strategic requirements for, for example, the reprovision of the children's hospital. Um, the outline business case looks at then the options for delivering that, so site options, um, or the service model options. Um, full business case uh, then looks at the detailed costing um, that comes out of, for example, design work um, and also workforce planning and so on. So really it is an iterative process at which point we, um, as an NHS board, check in with the Scottish Government Capital Investment Group um, at particular milestones to confirm support for us to continue to develop this project and all of the costs um, and procurement that, that really ensue from that. Okay. So just to make sure I'm understanding things, in, in terms of the journey of a project from start to finish, you would start with the initial agreement? Yes. And you describe that as really a, a strategic case? Yes. Okay. So you then move on to the outline business case. Uh, how much more detailed is the outline business case as opposed to the initial agreement? What the outline business case does that the initial agreement doesn't is um, do a full options assessment of, for example, you described um, whether or not children's would go to the Royal Infirmary at Little France or whether it would go to St John's. Um, and does the full... Um, strategic, ep economic, and financial assessment of, of those options in parallel. Okay. Uh, and again, if you have your outline business case approved by Scottish Government, what would happen next in terms of the project journey? Um, on approval of the outline business case, you um, have... Uh, you essentially have approval permission to go to procurement, um, to um, which is what happened, for example, with the 2008 OBC for, for children's, and that's where BAM were appointed as the PSCP that we've just looked at, um, to go to procurement, um, to go to the market and um, appoint contractors to work alongside you um, in the event of a capital development um, to develop the design and therefore the costing of the project you're working on. And then what happens at the final business case stage? Final business case stage is the output of that working with contractors um, to um, pinpoint the, the costs um, to um, the co yep, the cost to NHS Lothian and partners, including the Scottish Government, of the building that you have therefore designed. Okay. So again, just so I'm understanding things, initial agreement gets signed off, allows you to move to outline business case. Yes. Outline business case approved allows you to move to the procurement stage. 
what you then have to go back and do a, a final business case after the procurement exercise before the journey is effectively complete and if it was capital funding that the money would flow? Yes. If I can ask you to have a look, please, at the Scottish Investment Manual Business Case Guide. So that's in Bundle 3, Volume 2, at page 120, please. So Bundle 3, Volume 2, page 120. Is that document headed Scottish Capital Investment Manual Business Case Guide? Yes. So is, is this what you've re referred to as the, as the skim? It is, and if I can see the date on it further down. I don't, I don't think there's a date on the, on the front page. Right, okay. The 2011 version of it. Is it's certainly the inquiry's understanding is, is what you're looking at is the, is the 2011 version of, of the Scottish Capital Investment Manual. So that's Manual. what we used. So if we, if we could look on to page 123, please. Which states at the top in the foreword, NHS invests over half a billion pounds each year on new or replacement assets such as land, buildings, equipment and facilities with the increasing demand for infrastructure investment and recognising the lasting impact that such investment decisions have it is essential that we make the right investment choices and that we clearly demonstrate and deliver value for money for the taxpayer. Do you see that? I do. So is, is that, in, in essence, the whole purpose of the Scottish Capital Investment Manual process? It, it's about trying to ensure value for money for the public sector? Ensuring value for money and therefore prioritising what it's spent on. <clears throat> so if we skip the next paragraph and look at the third paragraph, it states, the emphasis on the economic case in this business case process is not simply concerned with the financial consequences of an investment decision, but also non-financial aspects. Making the right investment decisions, therefore, requires us to identify and act in support of the Scottish Government's range of strategic outcomes from the outset. People might consider that really when you're talking about a business case, it's, it's just simply about looking at the economics, but this suggests that there's a wider <clears throat> purpose to the Scottish Capital Investment Manual. Could you explain your understanding of, of that paragraph? Yeah, the, the economic case also takes into account um, the question of the service model that you're proposing to deliver and therefore it allows us to look at the effectiveness and efficiency of clinical models, clinical pathways. Um, it allows us to look at the contribution to the health of the population, the wider health, public health question of um, what a project might deliver. Um, it allows us to look at the safety of those clinical services, um, including the environment that they are provided in um, and the facilities. Um, and also it looks at the benefits to the wider community, I suppose in an economic sense, um, the employment that it might bring, um, the investment through construction, through facilities development, um, and so on. So it is wider than simply balancing the financial costs. Issues such as design and relevant technical guidance for a hospital, is that relevant at the outline business case stage? It is. Um, however, I'm, I don't think I'm best placed to answer detailed questions about that. So whenever you say you're not best placed to answer, if there was going to be input about design issues and technical guidance, for example, would that be fed into you and your role as editor by someone else? Yes. 
who would that person have been for, for this project? On this project, the design lead or champion, I think was the word, um, for um, this project in terms of guidance uh, was Ian Graham, the director of capital planning and projects for NHS Lothian. So if any issues about design or technical guidance, it would be capital planning that would feed into you and your role as editor to compile what's been provided? Yes. Thank you. Correct. So if we could look on to, to page 124, still within the Scottish Capital Investment Manual, <coughs> you'll see the top of the page, the guidance says, an assessment of design quality at IA, OBC and FBC stages is now part of the SGHD business case process the purpose of which is to ensure that the outcomes of development projects meet the government's objectives and expectations for public investment. The aim of mapping design into the business case process is to support the implementation of the policy on design quality for NHS Scotland by improving the level of design quality achieved across NHS Scotland and ultimately the outcomes achieved by doing so. Do you see that? What was your understanding of the, the policy on design quality for, for NHS Scotland that's referred to there? The policy on design quality, I was I was aware of it. I was aware of it being it, it underpinning the scheme and the business case. Um, the detail of it, though, I'm afraid I, I, I don't have any recollection of now, 12 years later. Yes, but again, I just want to be very fair to you. It's a long time ago, and part of the reason I'm taking it to the documents is it would be unfair to do anything else. But again, just so I understand it, when you're drafting or editing the, the outline business case, you're aware that there's a policy on design quality for NHS Scotland, and you know that that has to be addressed within the business case. Is that yes. correct? But you're effectively deferring to someone that has greater knowledge in terms of your colleagues in capital planning. I am. Thank you. In terms of the outline business case itself, obviously you're doing the editing process, but, but who would have ultimate responsibility for the content of the document? The document was approved by NHS Lothian Board, and therefore the accountable officer is the chief executive. However, between my editing and mm that being approved, submitted and approved by NHS Lothian Board. There was a project board, which was chaired by the senior responsible owner for the project. Um, and they took the outline business case to the finance and, it's called finance and resources committee at the time, and then on to the board. So it was approved first by a project board and then by a subcommittee of NHS Lothian Board and myself. So it's a series of stages of approval, obviously drafted in the collaborative way that, that you indicated, yes. then goes to the project board, finance and resources committee, and then ultimately to the actual board of, of NHS Lothian. That's right. And just again, just to, to cover that, that off, if we could look on to, to section six of the Scottish Capital Investment Manual and page 141, please. We see there that the ownership and responsibility for the infrastructure investment planning process rests with the NHS Scotland body developing or leading the development of the programme stroke project in question. Do you see that? Yes. Uh, and again, is that why you said ultimate responsibility would rest with the board of NHS Lothian? That's right. And it continues, issues of governance are dealt with in the SKIM programme and project organisation guide. For significant investments, NHS Scotland bodies should appoint a senior responsible officer for the project's direction at board level, as also recommended by the OGC gateway process. 
Can you just explain your understanding of, of what the senior responsible officer was in, in terms of the project? Senior responsible owner was an exec director who um, led on the project and reported on it to the board. So would that effectively be a, a person who was a link between the people that were doing the operational aspects of the project and then the board which had governance aspects associated with the project? That's right, yeah. Thank you. Still within page 141, section 6, it continues, the process should also involve the NHS body's board level environment or sustainability champion, a key role promoted in the environmental management policy. Under no circumstances should responsibility for the direction and the production of the business case be outsourced to external consultants. However, external consultants may be of invaluable assistance and their use should be considered where the necessary skills and resources are not available in-house. Do you see that? Can you just explain what, what external consultants, if any, were involved at the stage that the outlined business case was, was being produced? Um, in the 2012 outlined business case, we were working with Mott MacDonald, um, who provided along with Davis Langdon uh, project management support. Um, and for example, they were looking at the project execution plan, uh, which is an appendix in the OBC. Um, they were also part of developing the procurement strategy and understanding and exploring the procurement options for the project when we switched from capital to revenue. So that's, that's an example of what okay. MOTS were involved in. And then if we could return to page 141, just at the bottom of the page, it says, similarly, the production of the business case should not be regarded as an adjunct to the project manager's role and a hurdle to jump for approval process. Instead, it must be viewed as a fundamental part of the overall business planning process, which requires advice and guidance from the business managers, users and technicians involved in the scheme. Do you see that? I do. Just in, in terms of this project, obviously there's been the 2008 business case, which has been approved both by NHS Lothian Board and then by Scottish Government. There's also been the business case standalone produced for the Department of Clinical Neuroscience. And now there's the, the composite outline business case, the, the 2012 business case. Can you just explain how that process comes about and, and how intense the production of the 2012 outline business cases, given how much work's been done before? It was a very intense process, um, considering we needed to revisit everything that had been in the, the previous two, the separate business, outline business cases. Um, first of all, the whole business case process is iterative, so at any resubmission we have to confirm the latest strategic um, context we're working in and whether or not um, our preferred option still applies um, and still, still works for us. Um, but um, the biggest change was the change in the funding availability and that model. So actually that needed to be revisited in the economic case chapter, the financial case, the commercial case and the management case section. So four out of five really of the business case of the outline business case chapters were reworked extensively to, to fit the new model. So, so again, just so I'm understanding, it's significant and extensive work goes into the 2012 business case. It's, it's not just minor changes from what had gone no. before. It's a completely new business case. If I can ask you, one of the things that we'll see within the Scottish Capital Investment Manual is, is a reference to, to gateway reviews. Could you explain what's your understanding of, of gateway reviews? What, what are they and, and what's their purpose? Gateway reviews were our milestone checks or health checks on a project um, by Scottish Government. Um, I'm afraid I've forgotten the name of the department in Scottish Government that, that carries them out or that carries them out on their behalf. Um, and there was, uh, there is in Skim a review at each 
um, each milestone in the business case, essentially. So with the submission of the initial agreement, the outline business case, and at stages in procurement, um, there would be a gateway review carried out. So that was done for the Children's Hospital OBC as a standalone capital development. And I think a last one was done at the point we were developing the OBC for the joint um, for, the, for the joint children's and DCN. But at that point, because we had moved to NPD revenue funded, we switched to the stage reviews instead. Okay. So we'll come on and talk about that, but certainly at this stage, we're talking about gateway reviews. But you say that there's a shift whenever it moves into revenue funding that then becomes a, a separate process called key stage reviews. Yes. So just sticking with gateway reviews in terms of the, the Source Capital Investment Manual at the minute, if I can ask you to look on still within the Source Capital Investment Manual guide to, to page 175, please. This is effectively just describing phase one of, of what the gateway reviews would be, which says the IA has now been completed, so the investment, the initial agreement has been completed. Gateway one or health check one, the business justification stage should now be considered for the project prior to the formal submission of the IA to the approving authority for agreement, if, if required. Do you see that? Yes. So again, what was your understanding of, of what this, this first gateway review is, is doing after the initial agreement, but before the outline business case? Between the initial agreement and the outline business case, the health check would be to confirm that the direction of travel in the initial agreement um, was, is still is still relevant. Um, that project resources and expertise are sufficient to develop like that outline business case, um, and that the board is is ready to commit to that next level of of developing project. Is this really part of what you referred to as the iterative process, that you yes. don't simply do the initial agreement, forget about things, then do the outline business cases? It's a continuing journey. It is. And again, just, just to reference when the, the second gateway review would come in, if, if we could look on to page 219, please. And in the, the second paragraph on page 219, it says the advent of Gateway 2 procurement strategy following the production of the outline business case has reinforced the need to prepare for the potential deal at this stage. Do you see that? Yes. So again, in terms of your understanding, is, is that when the second gateway would come in when you're looking at the, the procurement strategy? That's right. You have effectively a review before the outline business case have the outline business case, and then you have a review before you actually go into the procurement exercise. That's correct. The next document I would like to look at, please, is within bundle four at page 99. Thank you. So you should see in the, in the top right hand corner, cell 19, 2010. We'll come on and look at it further down, but, but th this is effectively the, the 2010 design policy. This is just a, effectively a document that, that goes at, at, at the front of that. So if we see, for example, in, in paragraph three, this cell in the attached policy statement supersedes NHS HDL 2006. The cell also provides information on design assessment within the HSGHD SIG business case process. Do you see that? I do. And again, you'd said earlier, you understood that there was a design policy, but understandably, it was some time ago since you, you looked at it. 
if we look over the, the page, please, so page 100, at the top of the paragraph, it begins, the outcomes of development projects meet the Scottish Government's objectives and expectations for public investment. Support for the implementation of the design agenda will be provided by means of a coordinated tripartite working arrangement between Scottish Health Directorates, Health Facilities Scotland and Architecture and Design Scotland to facilitate the procurement of well-designed, sustainable healing environments which support the policies and objectives of NHS boards and Scottish Government health directives. Do you see that? I do. In terms of the, the 2012 outline business case, what advice and assistance was NHS Lothian receiving from the Scottish Government Health Directorate, if any? My recollection is that the outline business case that we were developing in 2011 and completed in 2012, um, uh, Scottish Government colleagues were working with us as to how to best take the work from the two standalone previously approved outline business cases um, under a different funding model and um, get, get, get us to a place where we could submit a revenue funded outline project as outline business case, making the most of all of the work that had already been done. Okay. So guidance and assistance being provided directly by the Scottish Government? Yes. Okay. Uh, what about architecture and design Scotland? What assistance, if any, were they providing at the outline business case stage? I wasn't involved in any discussions with architecture and design Scotland. I know that they did meet um, with senior colleagues, um, but I wasn't involved in the design development process, so I couldn't tell you what level of... Uh, and who, who do you think would have been having those discussions? Was there a particular aspect of, of NHS Lothian? I think you'd have to ask... Um, I think if you asked the project director um, and also the director of capital planning and projects okay. about that engagement, they'd know more than I do. So would that be Mr Brian Curry and Mr Ian Graham? That's right. And again, just for completeness, there's a reference to Health Facilities Scotland. What knowledge, if any, do you have of any assistance they were providing at the outline business case stage? I have no, no detailed knowledge. Um, and again, just to be fair, would it be Mr Curry and Mr Graham that might be able to assist the inquiry? If we, if we look on to page 101, please. And you see there at the top, on the aspects of design relating to functionality, particular technical and sustainability standards developed by HFS and the Department of Health in, in England. Do you see that? I do. And then if we look below that to, to paragraph 11, design assessment and the business case process, do you see paragraph 11? Beginning yes. an assessment of design. I do. It states an assessment of design quality is now part of the SGHD business case process. All projects submitted to the SGHD Capital Investment Group for approval are now submitted to an assessment of design quality and functionality, including technical and sustainability standards. This design assessment will take place at the initial agreement, outline business case, full business case stages for approval. Do you see that? I do. And again, cast your mind back to whenever you were editing the, the 2012 outline business case. Was that your understanding that there should be a design assessment that's taking place at, at that stage? Yes. And again, in your editing role, who is it that you would be looking to within NHS Lothian or, or an external body to complete the aspect in, in relation to the design assessment section? I think the information that was taken into the outline business case on this again came from um, the project director and the director of capital planning and projects. 
um, it was it in turn came from a review that was commissioned by Scottish Futures Trust that was undertaken by Atkins, an external consultant. So again, just to be fair, your understanding is that the design review that's been talked about within this policy, that, that was effectively what was done by a company called Atkins? It was, there was a design and cost review done by Atkins at the request of Scottish Futures Trust. Okay. Thank you. If I can ask you to look on to, to page 102, you, you'll see the actual policy itself, which, which might assist in jogging your memory. Yeah. So page 102 should be a, a policy on design quality for NHS Scotland. And at the bottom, you'll see 2010. Do you see that? Yes. And again, I, I just want to be very fair. It's my understanding that you knew about the generality of this policy when you're editing the outline business case, but not necessarily the granular level of detail. Yes. If I can ask you to look on to, to page 113, please. And to, to paragraph 9 under monitoring. Page 113, paragraph 9. Do you see a sentence beginning SGHD? Page 113. And then paragraph 9, just under the bold heading monitoring. There should be a section beginning SGHD. Yes. So it says SGHD will monitor the integration of design quality into healthcare building procurement through the business case approvals process, which will be facilitated through a coordinated assessment of the potential quality of proposed projects to support those responsible for decision making within the business case process. The assessment will involve the contribution of particular expertise on the aspects of design relating to government policy and design and placemaking from Architecture and Design Scotland and of particular expertise on the aspects of design relating to functionality, particularly technical and sustainability standards from Health Facilities Scotland. Do you see that? I do. Now, you mentioned that there was a report by Atkins. Do you recall when you were editing the 2012 outline business case if there were any reports by either Architecture and Design Scotland or, or Health Facilities Scotland that were provided to you? I do know that the Atkins report and the recommendations from that were reviewed by Health Facilities Scotland. And there is a statement in the outline business case in 2012 that... Um, Health Facilities Scotland design assessment process had been followed for the outline business case. And who, who, who told you that information? I don't recall now who told me that information, but what I can say is that that statement wouldn't have been made without the agreement of Health Facilities Scotland and HFS also sit on the capital investment group that reviewed the outline business case and therefore were party to approving. If I could ask you to look on to page 131, please. Mm 
and to the, the bold section headed design assessment, beginning an assessment. Do you see that? I do. So it states, an assessment of design quality is now part of the SGHD business case process. All projects submitted to the SGHD Capital Investment Group for approval are now subject to an assessment of the design quality and functionality, including technical and sustainability standards. The design assessment will take place at the initial agreement outline business case business case stages for approval. There are two complementary areas of consideration in the design of healthcare buildings. Those can broadly be described as healthcare specific design aspects, the areas generally covered by guidance issued by Health Facilities Scotland, and general good practice in design considered by human experience of being in and around buildings. These are brought together in the process and in the collaboration between Health Facilities Scotland and Architecture and Design Scotland in the NHS Design Assessment Group, which reports to the SGHD Capital Investment Group. This process forms part of the coordinated tripartite working relationship with SGHD and A plus D. Do you remember there, there being any report provided by the NHS Design Assessment Group as part of the, the outline business case process? No, I don't. The next document I'd like to look at, please, is, is the Scottish Capital Investment Manual Supporting Guidance Design Assessment in the Business Process. That, that's in Bundle 8 at page 63. Yeah. Is this a, a document that you've seen before? Yes. And would you have considered this at the point that you were editing the outline business case in, in 2012? Yes. So if I could ask you to look to, to page 64, please. You see at the top, introduction from the 1st of July 2010 an assessment of design quality will become part of the business case approval. This guidance should be viewed as part of the Scottish Capital Investment Manual notified through the, the NHS Cell 19. You see that? Yes. Uh, and those are effectively the documents that, that we've already looked at today. Uh, then if we look to the, the final paragraph just above contents, it states, although the full process described below and the requirement to refer projects to the NHS Scotland design assessment process applies only to projects that are to be considered by Capital Investment Group. It is intended and expected that boards will develop design statements and utilise self-assessment methodologies described below on all development projects. Do you see that? So is that your understanding that really this should be applied to the, the business case that, that you were considering? If we look over the page to, to page 65, please, the, the first full paragraph, three lines up from the bottom, there's a sentence beginning, these are brought together. So page 65, first full paragraph, three lines up from the bottom, these are brought together. These are brought together in this process and in the collaboration of HFS and A plus DS in the NHS Scotland design assessment process by the means described below. Do, do you see that? I do. Okay. And it then goes on to, to quote from a policy on design quality for NHS Scotland. And then the, the final paragraph on that page, all projects submitted to the Capital Investment Group for business case approval will be assessed for compliance with current published guidance. To facilitate this, boards will be requested to submit a comprehensive list of the guidance that they consider to be applicable to the development under consideration, see and set on next page, together with a schedule of derogations that are required for reasons specific to the project's particular circumstances. Do you see that? I do. So is that your understanding again of what part of this design review process would involve? It is. I don't recall the detail of the reference design.
If I could ask you to look to page 69, please. And to paragraph 1.4, the transitional arrangements at the bottom. Do you see that? Page 69, paragraph 1.4 at the bottom. It states, this guidance shall apply to all projects submitted for approval of the initial agreement after 1st July 2010. Projects that have not received approval for their outline business case by 1st July 2010 shall be considered for the assessment process on a case-by-case -case basis as part of the initial pilot phase. However, the development and demonstrated application of a design statement should be considered as good practice for all projects from publication of this guidance. Do you see that? I wonder if you could assist the inquiry. Obviously, for the project we are discussing, there's the initial agreement that takes place in, in 2006. Yes. But there's then effectively the combining of the Children's Hospital with the Department for Clinical Neuroscience. Do you remember there being any discussion when the business case was being produced as to whether this process would, would be applicable? I remember discussion as to whether or not we needed to go back entirely to initial agreement for a joint um, project and that being ruled out. Um, and in terms of the design assessment process, I do recall there were discussions about it. I wasn't party to them. So again, just to be very fair to you, in terms of whether this process had to be completed and if it did exactly what it should involve, is that effectively for other individuals within NHS Lothian, yes. although you would edit and insert that information into the outline business case? I was aware of the discussions, but yes, uh, Brian Curry, a better place to give you detail on. Thank you. If I can ask you then to, to look to the outline business case from the 25th of January 2012 itself, please. That, that's bundle four, volume two, at page 672. Thank you. Is whenever we refer to the 2012 outline business cases, is this the document that we're we're talking about? That's right. And this is the document you've described your role as the, the editor in the collaborative process. Yes. And if we look to, to page 676, please, paragraph 1.7. So page 676, paragraph 1.7. It states, the preferred option for the project, a joint build, RHSC and DCN, was identified in the business case update and approval received from the Scottish Government to develop this outline business case in July 2011. This outline business case has been written in accordance with Scottish Capital Investment Manual guidance. Do you see that? I do. And is that the guidance that we've, we've looked at this morning? Yes. So at the very bottom, there's strategic context at paragraph 1.9. State services for children and young people and for adult neuroscience patients will meet national aims and ambitions laid out in, and then over the page, page 677, you see the first bullet point, 2010 NHS Scotland Quality Strategy. Do you, do you see that? Is that the 2010 design quality policy that, that we've just looked at, or, or is that something different? It's something different. The NH there was an NHS Scotland Quality Strategy about the delivery of NHS services, and it wasn't simply restricted to design Sorry, quality. Michael, entirely, could you just repeat that answer? Sorry, the NHS Scotland Quality Strategy, I don't remember the detail, I'm afraid now, but is a different document to different the design quality statement we've been looking at. 
So again, simply it's a wider, more generalised policy. It's not the specific design policy that we looked at this morning. No, it's not. Thank you. If I could ask you to look on to, to page 685, please. And to paragraph 1.70 at the very bottom of the page. Beginning of the reference design. So page 685 at the bottom, paragraph 1.70. Do, do you see that, Miss Cousins? I do. So it states the reference design and development of the final design with the preferred bidder will both be subject to a range of reviews as work progresses. To date, these have included the following, and findings from each have influenced the ongoing design development. Do you see that? I do. And the final document mentioned is Health Facilities Scotland NDAP design assessment. Do you see that? I do. Again, just make sure I'm understanding you. Is that an entry that you would have put in independently or is that an entry that someone would have told you should be inserted? I will have been advised to insert that. Yeah. Again, just to be very fair, the inquiry has a, a witness statement from, from Mr Brian Curry, who was the, what was his role in the project? Project director. So Mr Curry says in, in his witness statement at, at paragraph 66, I'll, I'll just read it out to you. He says, I've been asked whether an NHS design assessment process, NDAP, ever took place in respect of the project. It did not because we already had secured business case approval. That, that's Mr Curry's position, which we'll, obviously the inquiry will ask him about in, in due course. But again, just to try and under, understand how if, if Mr Curry is saying that that process didn't take place can you assist the inquiry in, in terms of, of how that statement's got into the, the outline business case that a process was completed? Yes, uh, I think I can. Um, the, um, as I mentioned earlier, the Atkins Design and Cost Review was shared with Health Facilities Scotland. Um, Health Facilities Scotland reviewed their recommendations and provided comment as well. Um, that is also in Bundle 3, Volume 2. Um, and um, at the time, I, I don't recall conversation specifically about the wording around this, but we will, we would not have put that statement into the outline business case with, uh, without HFS agreeing, and they subsequently approved the outline business case, <coughs> that sufficient design assessment process had taken place at this stage and I can only imagine now that that was part of the case by case review for the transition arrangements of the introduction of the design quality standards. So again just to be fair your understanding is, is that that statement whether or not a formal health facility Scotland in that design process took place your understanding as editor of, of the outline business case, was that Health Facilities Scotland were content for that entry to be put within the business case? That sufficient design assessment had been completed for this business case. My understanding is that in terms of the appendices to the outline business case, the, the Atkins report is, is provided, is that correct? That's right. But there isn't anything that would be called a Health Facilities Scotland in that design assessment, included no. as an appendix. No. Uh, and again, if I, I can just understand the, the process that the outline business case goes for approval, so it would firstly go to the project board. I think you tell us at paragraph 30 of your statement if you want to turn it up. Yes, it goes to the project board and then subcommittee of NHS Lothian Board before NHS Lothian Board and then it goes to the Capital Investment Group at Scottish Government. So again, just so I can understand, in terms of your role as, as editor of the outline business case, 
the outline business case which, which states that a health facility Scotland end up design assessment has been completed. That that goes to the project board, but no one actually asked to see a physical document called Health Facilities Scotland end up design assessment. No. And then again, the outline business case will go to the Finance and Resources Committee. And again, no, nobody on that body was coming back and asking to see a physical document called Health Facilities Scotland end up design assessment. Not that I recall. And then again, it goes to the full NHS board, and no one on the NHS board is asking to see a physical document called Health Facilities Scotland End Up Design Assessment. Does that surprise you? No. Why not? Because the appendices that went through those governance committees to the outline business case. Um, included the design and design review by Atkins, um, and that was a, a piece of work that was commissioned by Scottish Futures Trust, um, and was thought to be—I can only assume—was thought to be sufficient to underpin the outline business case. So, the, effectively, that particular. Health facilities Scotland end up design assessment might not be there, but but there's the Atkins report effectively as a substitute. Is that your position? Yes. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> Just I think so that complete in terms of what the outline business case contains. If we look perhaps onto to page 737, please. Do we see at page 737 that the management case, we, we see governance structures being set out? Yes. And then if we look on to, to page 738, At paragraph 6.8, we see the procurement strategy for the project being set out. And then if we look on to, to page 740, we see in more detail from paragraph 6.28 onwards what, what the project management structure is for the project. So page 740, paragraph 6.28 onwards. Yes. And then if we look on to page 744, at paragraph 6.45. Seven four four. Paragraph 6.45, we see that the role of, of Malt McDonald, the external advisors that you talked about earlier in your evidence, being, being set out within the business case. That's right. If I could ask you to, to put that document to one side, please, and then look within your, your statement to paragraph 12, please. Page 162 in my copy in the top right hand corner, paragraph 12, beginning, in my view, it made sense. Yes. So you say, in my view, it made sense to utilise the significant amount of work undertaken and costs incurred on the RHSC project to date. And that is why the approach taken with the new scheme was to use work already completed as a reference design for procuring design and construction partners in the NPD project. Do you see that? I do. You very helpfully said out what your understanding was and why that, that was a good thing to do. Within the context of the project, whose decision was that to make? To adopt a reference design. Really to utilise the work that had been done in effectively if we like the old project and take that forward into the new revenue funded project? I'm afraid I don't recall.
Within your statement at paragraph 14, you, you mentioned gateway reviews that were undertaken at an earlier stage in the project. Could I ask you please to look to bundle three, volume one at page 797. <coughs> Thank you. It's just that document headed up Gateway Review, and then in the bottom left hand corner we see Gateway Review to the de Delivery Strategy. Yes. So it, effectively, this is the review that's taking place whenever the project is still capital funded, as opposed to whenever it becomes revenue funded. Right, okay. And if we look on to page 798. In the fourth box down, we'll, we'll see that it's dated the, the 9th of March, 2010. Do you see that? I do. Sorry, my fault, Mr McGregor. Page? Uh, so it is within Bundle 3, Volume 1, at page 797 is the front page of the Gateway right, Review. I've got the front page. Sorry. Then the date is on page 798 in the third box down. On page 798, it should have report status and then final report issued to SRO. Then if we look on to, to page 800, you see procurement stroke delivery state status at paragraph 1.31. Do you see that? Page 800, paragraph 1.3.1. And it states the project's outline business case was approved in August 2008. Thereafter, a decision was taken to combine the build of the RHSC with the proposed Department of Clinical Neurosciences, which again you've told us about in your evidence. It continues, in early 2009, professional services contractors PSC and a framework principal supply chain partner PSCP were appointed to take this combined project forward. In late 2009, Scottish Government Health Department advised that the capital funding would not be available for the DCN and the two new builds have therefore been unoccupied. Do you see that? Yes. And again, does that jog your memory in terms of the timeline and in terms of when the, the announcement might have been made by the Scottish Government? Yes, that was the year before. So effectively, in, in 2009, NHS Lothian had been told there's no capital funding for the, the DCN but this is slightly before the announcement that it's going to all be revenue funded as opposed to, to capital funded. If we could look on to page 803, please. A reference here to, to HFS Health Facilities Scotland. So, so page 803 states, experience in this project has been the HFS support has been useful in some early advice. But as the project has developed and the client team has been strengthened by the appointment of experienced and highly capable staff, HFS advisors clearly need to adapt their role. In this case, the need to adapt does not appear to have been fully recognised to the extent that they have been seen as meddling in areas of direct service delivery that are now clearly the remit of NHS Lothian as the client to the contract. This is potentially damaging to the service the client receives from their advisors and needs to be resolved as soon as possible. Do you see that? I do. Do, do you remember any such discussions whenever you were producing the, the 2012 outline business case? I'm afraid I don't. One of the things that you mentioned in, in your evidence earlier is that there was, there was a change from these gateway reviews to, towards key stage reviews. 
You addressed these at, at paragraph 16 of, of your witness statement, but could you just summarise really how a key stage review was, was different to the, the gateway reviews? Key stage reviews were the, the milestone or health checks um, that were introduced for the NPD, the revenue funding model, um, when the project changed. Um, the content of them, in terms of a review, I couldn't, I couldn't tell you the detail now as to how that differed. Um, the party undertaking the review, the key stage reviews, was Scottish Futures Trust, who hadn't been involved previously in gateway reviews. They weren't involved in capital funded projects. Okay. Sorry, couldn't, I, I think. Sorry. Um, I just missed um, your explanation, which I think was of who actually carried out the gateway review. The gateway review was a department within Scottish Government, the key stage review was Scottish Futures Trust. Right. Right. So, just so I'm absolutely clear about that, the Gateway Review was internal to Scottish Government. It, it wasn't an independent third party, for example. Yeah, Thank that's you. right. And again, just so I'm absolutely clear, we're talking about Gateway Reviews when we're talking about capital funding. And then we're talking about key stage reviews in the context of revenue funding. That's correct. Now, one document that you've mentioned in your evidence today, which, which you also mention at both paragraph 8 and paragraph 16 of your statement, is the, is the Atkins review. So if we could turn to that, please. It's in, it's in bundle 3, volume 2, at page 567. Is this the report that you're talking about when you refer to the, the Atkins review? Yes, it is. So it's Royal Hospital for Sick Children, Stroke Department of Clinical Neurosciences, Independent Design Review, Scottish Futures Trust, 12th December 2011. And if we look on to, to page 571, please. <clears throat> see summary and recommendations. The purpose of this independent review was to assess the design brief for the project to replace the Royal Hospital for Sick Children in the Department of Clinical Neurosciences in the Little France site. The review assessed the capacity of the project to deliver value for money by meeting the strategic aims of the programme, by making best use of space and opportunities for maximising sharing with other assets and by minimising the whole life cost. Do you see that? I do. It's really the, the whole ethos of this report is, is about delivering value for money. There's various recommendations made. So if we look, for example, on, onto page 573. It deals with space planning, inpatient beds and wards, and, and it addresses the, the single room issue. Do you see that? Making recommendation six that there's a review that there's a review the current outturn percentage of single rooms within the SOA as it is less than the stated target. Yes. You could look on to, to page five hundred and seventy six, please, whereby the, the reference design is addressed. So towards the bottom of the, the page, page five hundred and seventy six towards the bottom. Do you see that? Yes. So it says, at the point of our review, the reference design was relatively underdeveloped considering the stage of the project. There was no clear and settled building diagram. This means that the clinical adjacencies are not yet wholly resolved. There's not an understanding of how departments can be developed in detail within the current blocks. There's no resolved strategy which can be expressed in supporting diagrams for communication route segregation of flows or FM servicing. Do you see that? I do. So again, in terms of 2012 outline business case, was it your understanding that at that point in time, although a reference design was to be used, that it was relatively underdeveloped for the stage of the project? 
that's the description of this here. Yes. And it then continues below the bullet points. Clarity about these issues will be crucial to the NPD design process to ensure that the facility delivers the desired clinical efficiencies and patient satisfaction. As previously noted, a stated requirement for the emergency department to be adjacent to the outpatient department for the purposes of major incident planning is not currently being achieved. And then we see recommendation 16.1, provide clinical planning diagrams now to determine the communication and circulation strategy, as well as department adjacencies. Two, resolve the circulation strategy within the reference design. And three, match the adjacency matrix to the development plan. <clears throat> We've asked you still within the Atkins report, please, to look on to page 637. <clears throat> within section 7.2.2, you see a, a chart that's got various colours in it. Do you see that? I do. So on page 637, paragraph 7.2.2, and at letter F, there's a question mark and an engineering. Do you see that? I do. And it says towards the right hand side, zero, zero out of five scored. Do you see that? I do. And then if we look to paragraph 7.2.3, scored and unscored elements. It states a number of elements are unable to be scored at this stage because the design is insufficiently developed, in particular performance, engineering and construction cannot be scored at this stage. Do you see that? So again, just so the inquiry is understanding matters, at, at this stage, 2012 outline business case, there's the Atkins report that goes in as an appendices, which effectively states that engineering and construction elements of the design simply can't be scored because of the, the stage of development. Is that correct? That is what that says. Um, <coughs> I wasn't involved in the ADET of this particular project, having done them since then on other schemes, um, I think what's intended by that statement is it's not expected to, to be able to score performance engineering and construction at that stage. The design is insufficiently developed at that point in a project. So you would take that there's, there's nothing unusual from the statement there about those three performance engineering and construction particularly as the next paragraph goes on to say where it is surprising they haven't been scored is that the the paragraph beginning however some of the elements yeah it does specifically say however some of the elements which have not been scored are surprising for example and, and then it sets out areas such as space access staff and patient accommodation and urban and, and social integration I can ask you to, to look on, please, to, to page 644, still within the Atkins report, and to the very final section, paragraph 7.8, building services and programmes to Bream. <laughs> page 644, paragraph 7.8. Do, do you see that, Ms Cousins? I do. And it states... The bottom paragraph 7.8, the approach to building services design and progress towards a high BREAM score was not assessed as it anticipated this will form part of the technical monitoring of the project by both the Scottish Government and HFS. Do you know what was meant there by technical monitoring and, and how that would be implemented? I don't recall. Do you recall if there was any issues around that included within the outline business case? No.
If I can ask you to view your statement in front of you, please, and, and to look to, to paragraph 17. And at paragraph 17 of your statement, you, you state that the Scottish Futures Trust were working closely with NHS Lothian in reviewing design and cost in particular. Can you recall what information was provided by Scottish Futures Trust as, as part of that reviewing process? Information that was provided by them to us? Yes. Um, the expectations of the key stage review will have come from them, the, the criteria they were looking for. I don't remember the detail, but our key stage review submissions back to them will have been in response to a request for documents and information. So again, just so I'm understanding it, would it be fair to say that the process is an iterative backwards and forwards process? Absolutely. Okay. And if I can ask you to, to look to, to paragraph 18 of your statement, within paragraph 18 of your statement, you mentioned the role of Malt MacDonald and, and the reference design. Do you, do you see that? I do. If I could ask you to, to look within bundle three to, to volume two and to page 439, please. So this is, this is a contract control order in the top left hand side. Do you see that? I do. Do you recognise this document? Have you, have you seen it before? I've seen it in the bundle that was shared with us. I don't recall it from 2011. Okay. Uh, do you recall who would have approved or, or signed that document on behalf of, of NHS Lothian? Um, I would assume the senior responsible officer, possibly the uh, project director, depending on the value of it. So a, a senior person within senior, NHS yes, Lothian? Absolutely. And then the, the final issue, if I can ask you to look on to, to page 441, please. Page 441, you've seen in small writing at the top of the page, it is called a value for money statement. You see that? You've got Davis yes. Langdon, and then next to that, you've got value for money statement. Have you, do you recall this document from the time that you were producing the, the outline business case? No, I don't. I don't recall that this document was part of the outline business case. This was a contract for developing the reference design. It, 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 what didn't, it didn't form part of the business case. And do you know who would have had knowledge or responsibility for this document within a NHS Lothian? It will have been a senior colleague. And do you know if it would have been forwarded to the, the Scottish Government, the Capital Investment Group, or, or to Scottish Futures Trust? I don't know for certain, but as it was related to the development of the reference design, uh, therefore the change in procurement route and funding route, then I would assume that it had been, they'd Thank been party to it. Thank you. Ms Cousins, I don't have any further questions for you, but, but Lord Brodie may, and there may be applications from core participants, but thank you. Thank you. Does anything arise out of Ms Cousins' um, evidence? I think the answer to that question is no. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Ms Cousins. That's um, the end of your evidence. Good to go. Thank you very much for your assistance. Thank you. Thank you. Shall we do a coffee break? Um, we'll sit again at um, about quarter to quarter to twelve. I don't think we have time um, for um, the live feed to follow us. I think that's covered.